Hello friends, this video on microbes in human welfare part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us now talk about the process of production of biogas. How exactly biogas is produced? So we saw that the microorganism which is involved for biogas production is methanogens and they undergo fermentation as a result of which mostly methane is formed along with that carbon dioxide is also formed. So here we will talk about the biogas plant, how exactly the construction is inside. So now let us see the various components of a biogas plant. So if you talk about the construction of the biogas plant, it has a dome like structure of bricks. So here you can see the dome like structure. So this is the dome shaped structure which is made up of bricks. It has a mixing tank. So here if you see this entire thing is a mixing tank where all the ingredients are mixed well. So what are the ingredients in this case? Ingredients is basically cow dung which contains methanogens. So cow dung and water is mixed very well together to form slurry and this mixing is done in the mixing tank. Next is the digester. So from the mixing tank it goes into the digester. What happens there? It is, it is like a sealed chamber. So the digester is a, so here you can see this portion is the digester where, so here you can see the slurry. So slurry mixing happens in the mixing tank. From there it comes into the digester. So this is the digester. This is the slurry. What is slurry? Slurry is nothing but mixture of cow dung with water. So this mixture is called slurry and the mixing is done in the mixing tank. Then it moves into the digester where the process of anaerobic uh, fermentation takes place. So as we know the anaerobic orga uh, organisms, they do not need oxygen for breakdown of the slurry. So the entire process in absence of oxygen takes place in the digester. So the most important part of biogas production happens in the digester. Next part is the gas tank. So here you can see the gas tank. So this portion is the gas tank. So what happens here? Here the biogas is stored and that is why it is called gas tank and it is located just above the digester. And finally you have the gas outlet. Here you can see the gas outlet. So from here the biogas is taken out. So from here the slurry is input. Slurry input is given and then it goes to the digester. So the actual process takes place in the digester, biogas is formed, it is stored in the gas tank and then it is taken out through the gas outlet. So this is the overall construction of a biogas plant. So let us quickly look at the working of the biogas plant. As I mentioned before also, so the first step that happens is the mixing. So mixing is going to be the first step and what gets mixed? Cow dung gets mixed with water and cow dung plus water forms slurry and this happens in the mixing tank. So this entire process of mixing takes place in the mixing tank. So this is the first step. In the next step what happens is slurry is fed into the digester. So slurry is fed into the digester and what happens in the digester? This digester is a sealed chamber. So here you can see a sealed chamber and there is no oxygen here. So digester is a sealed chamber with no oxygen therefore only anaerobic organisms can perform their job here and we already know that the methanogens are anaerobic organisms they do not need oxygen so they break down the composition of slurry and as a result so methanogens will start their work here now as a result what will happen gases like CH4, CO2 are generated how they are generated by the process of anaerobic respiration. So these gases are generated. Now what will happen to the gas? So these gases all together form the biogas. So where will the biogas go? So this biogas gets stored in the gas tank. So the biogas gets stored in gas tank and then from the gas tank it is taken out. So biogas is taken out through the outlet. So this is how the entire process of biogas production takes place. 
So I, mean, I just gave you a brief about how this happened. So this is the basic concept here. So now let us look at some of the advantages of biogas. Why are we talking so much? I mean, production of biogas by microorganisms. How production of biogas is helpful to us. So let us look at the advantages. It is an excellent fuel because it, 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 it is no less than any other fuel. Now other fuels, they might be non-renewable, they might be expensive, but this is cheap, renewable. At the same time, uh, it, it, is, it utilizes the waste products burns without smokes now since there is no smoke so there is no pollution leaves no residue again when no residue is left again you don't have that headache of disposing of the residue treating the residue to reduce its side effects so all those issues are not there high heating capacity that is it, it can heat an object very quickly so that ability of uh, it makes it an excellent fuel Slurry left behind is used as excellent manure. So if you see the slurry which is left behind, like after the production of biogas, some residue will remain. I mean, some, that residue which is remained is the slurry. But that slurry is not a waste. It can be used as a manure. What is manure? Manure are those substances which when added to the soil, increases the fertility of the soil. So that is also whatever is left behind in a biogas plant that itself is advantageous to us in some other way. Now let us look at some of the disadvantages. It contains contaminant gases which can be corrosive to metal parts. Now if you see the gases which get produced because biogas is a mixture of gases. It has methane, it has carbon dioxide, it also has very small amounts of other gases as well. Now some of these gases in fact, even if you talk about methane, so it acts as an excellent fuel. that is one uh, feature or one quality of it. But the, these gases can also cause contamination in terms of it can corrode the metal parts. Not feasible to locate at all the locations now. The kind of raw material that is needed for a biogas plant, it cannot be located in any location we want because a lot of cow dung will be required. Now in order to get that cow dung, it is not necessary that all localities will have enough sufficient amount of cows or cattle to provide that cow dung. So that means also it is not feasible to locate at any location. Efficiency is less. Now when you compare the efficiency of uh, this biogas with some other uh, sources of energy, its efficiency is little less when compared to that. But then the advantages which it provides like pollution free, no residues left. So all those things are very important because at the same time we do not want to pollute our environment because that in turn is again going to be harmful to us in an indirect way. So these are some of the uh, negative effects or some of the disadvantages associated with biogas. So now we will talk about bi microbes as biocontrol agents. Now before we talk about microbes, let us first try to understand what are biocontrol agents. Now even before we understand that, we should know what, uh, what do we mean by biocontrol. What does this word mean? So biocontrol means biological methods to control plant diseases and pests. Now a large number of plants and crops get spoiled due to insects or pests which damage the plants and kill them. So there is a huge loss involved in the crops due to plant diseases or pests. So a solution is required. Now most of the time the solution which is preferred by many people is the use of insecticides and pesticides. But there are certain disadvantages or there are certain uh, negative effects of, the, of excessive use of insecticides and pesticides. So there are some biological methods as well where living organisms can be utilized to control plant diseases and pests. So they, it will serve two important purposes. One is those living organisms can be put into some use. Secondly, the, the too much use of chemical uh, fertilizers, insecticides and pesticides can be minimized. So here we will talk about the biocontrol methods and we will see how microbes are helpful in the biocontrol methods. Now these are some of the insects. Not only insects or pests, there are sometimes the weeds which are the unwanted plants which grow anywhere. 
nearby a normal plant and they compete with the plant for nutrition and water and everything and that is how the plant had to compromise on its uh, essential nutrients like for example let us suppose this is your desired plant so this is this plant has been grown and unnecessarily a weed has grown some un undesired plants have grown but both these are growing both of these plants are growing in the same locality so they are competing they are each other's competitors to receive nutrients sunlight water and all required things so as a result what is happening so this weed which is undesired we do not want it but still it is taking away a share of the essential nutrients which might have been gone to this plant so that ways the weeds also affect the plants now normally insecticides and pesticides are used however if pests can be killed using other living organisms then all these uh, or the negative effects of pesticides and insecticides can be minimized to a large extent. Now, before we talk about the biocontrol agents, let us look at the disadvantages of using insecticides and pesticides. How can they harm us or the plants? Now, insecticides and pesticides, what are they? They are basically harmful chemicals or poisonous chemicals. So when they are poisonous to insects and pests, they are, they are not only poisonous to specific insects, they are poisonous to all life forms. So that means they leave some toxic effect on the plant, on the crops and now when those plants or crops are eaten by other living organisms, it, it, is, it produces its negative effects on that organism as well. So that means the use of insecticides and pesticides can leave a long term effect not only on the insects and the pests but also, also on the plants and also on other living organisms who consume those plants. It can cause soil and water pollution. Now excessive use of pesticides if it is followed by too much of irrigation that is too much of washing away by water it can cause soil erosion and it can also cause soil pollution because the same chemical get transmitted to different uh, areas and that is how the soil gets polluted and in the so inside the soil also many living organisms live now when the soil turns toxic it becomes a threat in, uh, it, it's a threat to those living organisms which are living in the soil Killing pests can create problems for those animals which depend on pests either for food or host. Now the pests which we are talking about or the insects or the weeds whichever we are talking about what are they? They are also some plants or animals for example insects. Now let us suppose the insects they harm the plants but there are other organisms which depend on that insect for their food because there might be some birds which feed on that insects. Now if we start killing all the insects what will happen those birds will lose their food. So they they will they will I mean they will not be able to get their food properly so that means the balance of the ecosystem will get disturbed because whichever is a pest whether it is an insect or it is a weed because there are many animals which feed on weed so weed acts as a food source for other animals Similarly, for some animals, the pest can act as a host. That is, there might be some tiny organisms which are living inside the or on the body of the pest. So, if we start killing all the pests using insecticides or pesticides, that can also create a disbalance in the ecosystem because there might be other animals which are dependent on the insects or the pests either for their food or because the pest acts as their host. So these are some of the disadvantages of use of chemical insecticides and pesticides. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.